Hello friends. Uh, today we are going to study about projectile motion. This is a particular topic of uh, IB physics, which is uh, based on whether you understand vector resolution or not. So, although it is it is customary to mention about vector resolution, uh, but I would assume that you are okay with that. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because vector resolution, you, can, you might think it is, it is definitely not required for, uh, for understanding this, but essentially in any part of mechanics, if you want to do well, particularly for IV physics, you need to be okay with vector resolution. Vectors form the backbone of the study of mechanics. So make this absolutely clear in your mind. If that is okay with you, uh, you are in a position to understand the following uh, discussion that uh, we will have. Now, having said that, projectile motion, I, uh, I feel, has uh, intrigued students quite a bit because this is one type of motion where you have two things. First, you have an object which is going through uniform velocity in a particular direction. And the same object going through uniform acceleration in a completely different direction, which is perpendicular to the previous direction. So the fact that you can analyze it in these two ways is based on the, uh, the property of uh, perpendicular vectors that they are independent of each other. So I will take one IB physics question for explaining this, and I hope you will be uh, able to follow it. So let us try to understand what or how we can understand projectile motion, the part that you need to understand for IB physics. Now this is uh, something that is uh, there in both uh, physics HL and SL, uh, SL uh, course. So anybody who is, uh, who is going through this, be it HL or SL student, I am sure you will find it useful. Now, whenever I teach this to my students uh, online, I uh, first make it a point that you get to understand the scenario where an object is being thrown at a particular direction to the horizontal uh, axis, let's say the x-axis, and the initial velocity can, can now be thought to be composed of two components. The horizontal and the vertical component. So over here, if you if you refer to the question that you can see, I've taken this from an IB paper, and it is giving you a graphical representation of what a real projectile motion would look like. Mind you, this is not an ideal projectile motion. Normally, when it is taught in school or in your textbook, whatever it is that you follow, uh, they would they would not take air resistance into account. Here, I have taken such a question where it takes air resistance into account. So I'll do two things. First, I will talk about the ideal case where there is no air resistance. And then next, obviously you understand that that is not uh, going to be sufficient for your IB physics exam because you can find these kinds of questions where you would be required to tackle air resistance. So how is it that we can do that? Now, let's begin from the start shall we say. So over here, uh, the question, if you if you refer to it, it, it's about what happens to the velocity of the projectile in, in between two points. Uh, so before going into the question, first of all, let's try to understand projectile motion in a better way. This is a way possibly uh, in which it can be represented for a real life scenario. But in order to understand that, we need to first resolve the vector um, velocity into the two components along the x-axis which I would take uh, as vx. So uh, obviously the velocity along the x-axis would be given as something like this. <clears throat> now mind you, uh, take a look that over here the, the velocity along the x-axis, I'm considering this uh, assuming that gravity is acting along the y-axis which is why the vertical displacement would be affected by gravity, horizontal displacement will not be. So that is key to understanding this, that this is, this is an incredible part of, uh, of, of understanding vectors because 
uh, you have the same uh, particle who, which is having simultaneously two velocities and one of them stays constant the other undergoes acceleration and that is because independent vectors as i have mentioned uh, sorry perpendicular vectors are independent so once i resolve the velocity into two components uh, x and y uh, i think we would be able to understand that better now i have already gone to the x component as you can see that there is no time dependence on x component that is solely because there is no force acting along x axis it's zero. So Newton's first law, you know, that if there is no net force along a particular direction, an object maintains its uh, state of rest or state of motion. So net force zero meaning object will move with constant velocity. However, that is not the case along the y-axis. You see, along the y-axis, you have gravity acting. So normally, if there is no air resistance along the y-axis, there would be a reduction of velocity with time with uh, uh, the instant when it is projected. So this is how the velocity along the y-axis would look like. Here, I am making use of the equations of motion where you know that uh, when you have uniform acceleration, you know how it is V equals U plus AP. Uh, mind you, uh, uh, friends, that over here, acceleration is in a direction opposite to that of the initial velocity vector along the y-axis. You see, I've, I've taken according to the diagram, the velocity along the y-axis is upward and gravity is acting downward. So obviously, if one is positive, the other has to be negative. That is exactly what I have done. So here also, this equation, when you apply this equation, V equals U plus AT, you have to keep in, keep it in mind that it is a vector equation. So normally when, 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 I, when I teach this to my students online, I, uh, I try to explain this by taking multiple examples uh, because the fact that velocity is a vector has to be realized rather than just read. And there are wonderful examples that are available. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you have gone through it. But I make it a point to uh, explain this aspect of velocity as a vector first before going into it. So I'm, I'm sure that is OK with all of you. Having understood that, that the velocity along y-axis is changing with time and along x-axis it's staying constant, let's focus on what's happening to displacement. Now, displacement along the x-axis, obviously that uh, will uh, be the way in uh, no, no, that uh, normally is for an object uh, un executing motion with uniform velocity. So obviously the velocity is known to us from uh, our previous expression. From there, we can find out the displacement as well. So let's say the displacement along the x-axis is given by this. Similarly, we can write down the displacement along y-axis. Here, I'll be using the expression, the second equation of motion. You know what it is, right? The s equals ut plus half a t square. But here also, it is important to understand that we are trying to use such an equation which is vectorial in nature. So although the initial velocity is again along the upward direction, the acceleration is in the downward direction. So they won't have the same sign. As a result, there will be deceleration that the object will experience initially. And uh, then, of course, uh, it, that is why it would, it would eventually stop, uh, stop moving upward. Uh, mind you, my friends, the object, the object executing projectile motion does not stop completely at any point of its journey. What happens is that at the topmost point, when it, when it lets it reaches from here to there, at the topmost point, it is the topmost point because it has stopped moving upward. Doesn't mean it has stopped. Because the horizontal velocity is still the same. It's still u cos theta, if you refer to it. But the vertical velocity, you can understand it, uh, it will eventually become zero and that happens only at the topmost point. So that is another key concept of projectile motion that uh, that would help you in uh, solving uh, ID problems. Okay, so if you have got the displacement along the y-axis, it, it looks something like this. Uh, over here, if, if you can understand, I've used ut plus half a t square s, the displacement being equals ut plus half a t square. But mind you over here, the in velocity, the initial velocity, I've not taken it as u. That is because I have used vector resolution. I am trying to find out the displacements and velocities along two perpendicular directions. And as a result, I'm taking the initial velocity components 
along the two perpendicular directions as well. So if this is fine with you, uh, the next part uh, that I just mentioned about how you are supposed to find out uh, uh, how you are supposed to analyze the case when the object reaches uh, the topmost point where it momentarily stops. But mind you, it stops moving up. It does not stop uh, altogether. So is it possible for us to find that time? When does it stop moving up? It definitely is because at that instant of time, you can understand that the vertical velocity becomes zero. So if I want to find that instant of time, then I'll have to equate the vertical velocity to be zero and I will get the corresponding value of time. So let's say I take that time to be the time uh, during which it goes up. So it should look something like this. So see over here, I've just taken vy to be zero. I've used this equation the previous equation of dy and I've substituted it to be zero. From there, I have got this equation where the corresponding time is t u or t up, the time during which the projectile or the object continues its upward journey. Beyond that time, it obviously goes up and then comes down. So its downward journey starts after t. Now, if you refer to this equation, you can certainly find out what t u is. Uh, you, you can just simplify this and you will get um, the expression of u. So let me just try to write that expression. Over here, I hope you can understand that uh, the expression will depend on the angle of uh, projection, certainly on the initial velocity and on, of course, uh, the acceleration due to gravity. So that means if you throw the same thing, with the same velocity and at the same angle, let's say on the moon, uh, certainly the time that it will take to reach the maximum height will be different. Now, will it increase or will it decrease? Let's find that out. Let's use the expression to answer our questions. So, if you can see that over here, Tu is inversely proportional to small g, which means uh, you, you know that on moon the value of small g is less it's roughly one sixth of what we have on earth so certainly if g is less u would be more because of this because of the simple reason that uh, gravity is obviously much much uh, lower over there in fact gravity this term also i should not use because on moon we'll have earth's gravity uh, you'll have moon's gravitational pull so that's how you get the time to reach the maximum height, the topmost point. <coughs> now, if this is the time, now using this, what we do next is to find out the maximum height itself. So let's say in, in, the, in the diagram that you see, the graph that you see, over here O is the topmost point. So under ideal conditions when there is no air resistance or things like that present. So over there, if I consider that the the, the expression of uh, displacement along y-axis, I consider that. In that expression, if I put t equals to tu, guess what value of y you will get? Just think about it. If I put t equals to tu in that expression, you will get the corresponding value of y when time is tu. Now, what is the high, what is the displacement, vertical displacement when the time is tu? Yes, you guessed it right. It's obviously the maximum height. So, when t is tu, y would be the maximum height. So let me just substitute that uh, in this expression and then you would be in a position to find out the value of uh, uh, the value of maximum height. Now here also you can you can understand that the maximum height is going to depend on of course the you know, velocity, initial velocity of projection. But does it depend only on the initial velocity of projection? Uh, if you uh, if, if you try to understand this, uh, there are also other factors that are uh, available. So we will uh, try to talk of those factors after we get the expression of uh, maximum height. And here it is. If I try to refer to the uh, expression of uh, maximum vertical height that is possible, which is uh, capital H. Of course, by height it means vertical height. This is uh, 
this is uh, kind of uh, redundant it's just not necessary uh, so yes so this is what you get uh, capital h to b so here only thing that you have to do is uh, is substitute the value of t that you have got from here so if you do that you will get something uh, interesting uh, and uh, and i will I'll, I'll explain why is it that i find, that i uh, claim that it is interesting uh, the reason is it's it, it's so beautifully uh, it's, it's so beautifully i, I would say uh, designed or you can say it is it is so beautifully uh, it can be beautifully visualized that uh, in in this case you will find that it's extremely symmetric what i mean by that is uh, when you throw something at a particular angle when you launch a projectile at a particular angle the vertical height that it depends on that that it reaches as you can see the expression it depends on of course uh, the initial velocity of projection the initial angle of course the angle of projection and certainly acceleration due to gravity this is what you get if you just uh, simplify this expression after substituting to u now what is interesting to note is that it's a sine squared theta term which means that let's say if uh, if you are uh, projecting if, if if it is sine theta then uh, if, if, if whether whether is it it is possible uh, to get a particular maximum value of h by just changing theta so what you are doing is that you are not changing u you are just changing theta and is it possible for us to achieve a maximum height by just doing that think about it sin theta you know by the very nature of it it has uh, its maximum value to be 1 and it is sin square theta so that will also be 1 so the maximum height that you can gain that you can get is of course when you throw it at right angles to the horizontal direction which means we are looking into vertical motion under gravity so this discussion gives you the idea that vertical motion under the gravity is a very very special case of projectile motion the case where the angle of projection is 90 degree so if you if you learn projectile motion you are actually learning vertical motion under gravity as well whatever we are discussing that applies completely to vertical motion under gravity with the only uh, with, with the with the only application that theta is 90 so if you do that i'm sure you can get the vertical height now if we have got the maximum vertical height what is the maximum uh, horizontal distance that my friends is called the range and for that we have to find out just one simple thing how long is the projectile in motion in midair? Now, for that, of course, if the projectile is moving, it will stay. It, it will it will keep on moving till the vertical displacement is not zero. So when it is zero, that means the the object has gone up and it has come down. Mind you, there is no. This this is not the case that the horizontal displacement is zero. It's just that the total displacement it can be thought of made up of two components horizontal and vertical so when it goes up and then it comes down it's only the vertical displacement that becomes zero so if i put that in the expression and if i take uh, uh, t common from it uh, it's, it's just a simple uh, uh, you know mathematical step in order to uh, make us understand what is it uh, I, I mean it, it 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 is a beautiful way of 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 understanding What's the difference between, uh, in a way, in a, in a very short way, what's the difference between physics and maths? So, uh, anybody who has thought about it, um, it, it, it might help you uh, if, if you try to uh, understand this. So, what is it? Let's try to understand. So, I've, I've put uh, vertical displacement to be zero, and this is what I get. So, I will get a very specific value of time when the vertical velocity is zero so you can understand that it's a quadratic equation so i'll be getting obviously two roots one would obviously be t equals to zero that is one of the roots and that is also uh, acceptable i hope you can understand that given that the object when it is projected at the instant of projection as well its vertical displacement is zero 
Now that is possibly uh, that is possibly what what maths is telling us, but this is not the solution that we are interested in. We are interested in that solution where the time is more than zero, and that will give us the total time during which the object is actually in motion. So that uh, it's it's uh, it's very aptly named that it is called the total time of flight. And I hope the name itself is enough. Uh, who said what's in a name? Huh? Uh, and I'm sure uh, sometimes the names are uh, all that we need to understand uh, something. So in this case, this capital P is definitely named properly. Now, if you if you take a look into this, this is also an interesting coincidence. And I, I wouldn't say it's a coincidence. It's it's really math or the nature of nature. So here, if you if you if you get to look into the time, the total time of flight that we are getting is double the time that the object takes to go up. So here you see that it's absolutely symmetrical. So why is it that over here in this graph, I'll now come to this graph. Uh, I think if you just put this value of t and you multiply it with u cos theta, you can get uh, the maximum range that is possible. Uh, so I would uh, exp I, I would just uh, express that and leave it like that because uh, I think otherwise this video <laughs> becomes uh, way too long. And if there is an interesting uh, uh, there is an interesting realization over here as well about how you can maximize the range. So this is uh, the horizontal displacement along the x-axis called the range, which is expressed as just velocity times time. Obviously, over here as well, we are, you can think that we are using s equals e because half a t squared is the only uh, application or the assumption that the acceleration is zero. So then it becomes a uniform velocity uh, case. So here we have the range. Now, the our 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 question is is definitely the case where it is not an ideal situation where you have air resistance present. So how will you handle this? Or why? If, if you take a look at this graph, you can see that from O to P, there is a distinct uh, steep fall. So why is that so? Now, if you refer to this graph, I, I think uh, you can understand that the slope of the graph is giving us slope. Let's say I, I call it M. That is giving us uh, displacement, vertical displacement over horizontal displacement. That is the slope of the graph. But that is not only what it is doing. If you try to uh, just uh, uh, try to modify it a bit, you can see that if it's if it's a vertical displacement by horizontal displacement, you can uh, divide that by time, and you will get vertical velocity by horizontal velocity. Now, why am I doing that? Is it necessary to think or is, is it necessary to modify the slope in that manner? What do I gain from it? I think you will gain something. So just stay with me for a while. Now, think about it. Uh, if there is air resistance, then from point O, if the object starts moving downward, there is air resistance along x-axis, there is a resistance along y-axis. Now, along y-axis, if you if you can understand, uh, there is also uh, the, the the force of gravity that is acting. So, if the object is moving up, the force of gravity is acting down. Air resistance is acting up, and eventually the object will be re, uh, will reach terminal velocity. So, if you refer to the slope, this v y, it will not change after the object has reached terminal velocity. So, it will stay put. But Vx, you can understand that there is only a resistance, so it will keep on decreasing. So you have a fraction where the denominator is staying constant, where the numerator is decreasing. Uh, sorry, where the denominator is uh, uh, decreasing and the numerator is staying constant. Uh, extremely sorry for that, Lisa. So what happens because of that? So if you refer to the fraction, if the numerator stays constant, but the denominator is decreasing, the fraction will increase. So you can see that the slope is so large during the part from O to P when the object is descending. And that is what, why I express the slope in terms of velocity. This shape of the graph is extremely important to understand why it is happening like that. 
and here it is that you have that explanation. It is possible that you might not need it for doing this problem. I just took up a particular problem from one of the ID papers. Uh, but this concept of why there is a steep, why there is a steep uh, a change in slope, why it is so, that can be understood only from this analysis. So I hope that the entire video, although I have not completed projectile motion over here, but I have given you uh, certain important uh, areas of discussion, and in a way, uh, it it is it is a wonderful topic of discussion in the sense that. Uh, it, it really gives you a, a, a good realization of, uh, you know, you, you, you have, I'm sure you have heard the saying, what goes around comes around. In this case, it really is the case. And possibly that might have been said for a, a vertical motion of gravity, which you now understand is a special case of projectile motion. So, yes, so who said that English and physics are not uh, related to each other? In fact, that is possibly the beauty of, of physics or uh, in general uh, physics and in particular IB physics, I would say that you can uh, have these beautiful links between different subjects, which helps you to explore more about the two subjects uh, individually and both as uh, collaboration. Okay, so I think uh, uh, this is where I'm going to end uh, this video. I hope uh, you have liked it and if there are any feedback or comments, you can get back to me. Uh, also, the people, if you, if you feel that uh, there is there is uh, something that you'd like me to uh, relate or to discuss more on, let me know, and uh, and I, I I would certainly try to take care of that. Also, if there is anybody who is interested in discussing it in a much more detail, in uh, let's say one to one basis, I am also available to for that. For that, you have my email ID available. That's given in the description box below. So till next time, this uh, is uh, what uh, we have. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Have a great day.